Welcome to my NC Talk. My name is Shaga Sasulu, and today I have the esteemed pleasure of speaking to the chairperson of the ANC, Mrs. In fact, Mama Balega Mbete. Mm -hmm. uh, how are you, Mom? I'm fine, thanks, and compliments of the season. Compliments of the season to you. So I, I think the, 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 the reason we're here today is, is obviously to end off the centenary, the season, the, the, the year of celebrating 100 years of the ANC's yes. as existence. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that, that year gone for you? It's been a very busy year, Shaka, but it's been a very good year for the ANC, for its members, but in particular for veterans who have seen it mm. develop to what we see today, yeah. who've lived it, who've molded it, who've made it into what they are handing over to younger generations. So it's been a great year. An incredible milestone. Mm. Yes, right. absolutely. In this year, uh, uh, I, I know there was, uh, there was a flame in particular, quite symbolic. What, what is the symbolism of that? The flame is very important, Shaga. If you go back to January 2012, mm. when for the first time in many decades, we were in the Vaihuk Church, Mm. which is exactly where the founding conference was held in 1912. Mm. The president actually lit the flame mm. at midnight, exactly at the parting of the first century mm. and the coming in of the second century. Mm. And that symbolized the flame that was actually realized and pulled together in the formulation of the values, the principles, and the founding, uh, of the foundations of the African National Congress, when in 1912, our founders, men and women, uh, well, I, I would hope that one day with research would know exactly who participated in that conference. Yeah. When they left that hall, it was the first time that Africans had a national vehicle. Yeah. And, and so we can see the flame as that a uh, fervor, that burning desire to go around the country. And we saw the flame move from Vaihuk, from uh, the national point to a provincial level mm. there in the Free State. And then throughout all nine provinces. So the, from there the flame... Symbolizing the movement mm. around our people, the, the igniting of that passion of that uh, single-mindedness of purpose and an agreement as to the approach to what became a hundred-year-old vehicle for our liberation. What are some of the stories, some of the histories that, that might have surprised you, that you didn't know of before you actually embarked on this journey with the flame? There were so many, Shaka, that uh, it's, it's, it's difficult to, to remember one. But I was very moved at a moment when the flame was in the Gauteng province. Mm. And in that particular month, the president that we were honoring, including through the presidential memorial lecture, was uh, President Kruma. Mm. Uh, we went to his house, and a historian uh, came from America, and there was a, an event at his house. And this guy uh, had brought an actual uh, recording. And there was a photograph of President Kruma. And the next minute he came alive, he was talking, he spoke for about four minutes. And for me, it was, wow, I hear this guy talk. The American brought the recording from the US. Brought the recording from the US. <laughs> and we learned actually how much history yeah. is sitting all over the place in the US in newspapers yeah. and historians other than South Africans are busy writing, piecing together all that information and bringing it alive to, to, to our people. You know, Ma, we talk about the struggle a lot, mm. you know, mm. as conceptually. Yeah. What, what is your own experience of this? When, do you remember joining this struggle and what, were the, what was your experience of some of the milestones that you passed, you know, these important milestones that you have seen personally? You know, people ask, I've come across that question all over the place. I don't remember taking a decision to join the struggle. Mm. I remember growing up. I remember being conscientized. I remember the, the, the stirrings of a consciousness that said, I have a role 
to do something, to be part of something, and ending up at some point getting into trouble with the law and leaving South Africa. This was um, back before 1976, uh, uh, leaving the country, and therefore finding myself being part of the ANC, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the rest is history. Now, the milestones, uh, I don't know the meaning of milestones, but I came across a whole lot of people that made such an impact mm. in my own life that, you know, I can't think about myself, my own uh, development, my own consciousness without thinking of leaders yeah. that came before us. That one came across both outside South Africa in South Africa, people like uh, O.R. Tambo, people like the old men Sisulu, Ma Sisulu. I can only think about those people who were our political parents yeah. uh, uh, as, as, as people who really played a major role in handing over to us an understanding of a responsibility that the ANC historically was given by the people of South Africa. And we speak about the next 100 years. Mm. So there's a presupposition that the ANC will exist in the next 100 years. I have no doubt it will exist. And the challenges it faces now, mm. uh, or the, the quest for the ANC to remain relevant mm. to young people, for example, mm. how, how, do you, how is the ANC going to, to deal with these challenges? You see, when you ask the question, how will the ANC yes deal with such and such. You, you talk as though young people are not part of the ANC. Mm. The ANC is various layers of generations, of particular interest groups, of particular policies and, and, and areas of preoccupation by various sectors of people that participate in it. Those people, if we continue with the culture of continuously interacting, mm continuously debating, persuading one another, showing each other where perhaps there are things we must rethink, there are ways in which maybe we have to change how we do things. That is where lies the answers to the question of how will we keep changing and being relevant to particular moments in history. A link to what you're saying, mm. there's, the, there's, I suppose, a con there's a continuous conversation going on about this tension between the, the old guard or the custodians now of the ANC and their will to, you know, to take care of certain things vis-a-vis -vis young people coming in mm. and asserting their own ideas on how certain things must go. Mm. And you, you always get the sense you know, when you speak to senior leadership that leader, senior leadership is saying, well, come in, come in and do these things. And yet, how much are you... Uh, are you creating the pathway for those young people to actually come in? You see, w where I'm not agreeing with the way you pose the question yes. is that you, you, you are putting it as though young people are outside the ANC. Young people are here in the ANC. They've always been. In fact, they were the major movers and shakers even at the foundation of the ANC. Pixliga Isagaseme was a young man. He was a young lawyer. Mm. And, and, and so were a whole lot of his colleagues of that time, his friends with whom they ran around, formed the ANC, but gave way for more mature people to actually take major leadership uh, uh, positions and roles. And I think it's a question of an ongoing engagement and a way of relating, a way of continuing to engage and talk about things and therefore be able to influence one another in an appropriate tone of the way we relate and talk and engage and be part and parcel of the same process of the ANC. Not a revolutionary tone. Revolutionary tone is fine. Revolutionary but, tone. But, but revolutionary tone is not insults and chaotic way of, 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 of dealing with each other. That is a difference. I want to bring us, focus us on this revolutionary tool. Mm. Now, the ANC, we know the revolution was not just about politics. It was also about culture. Mm. Uh, you know, there's a series called Amandla. It talks about uh, a revolution in four-part harmony. Mm. I know that mm. every young child who imbibed it grew up, you know, uh, sloganing and, and with the poetry and mm. song. Mm. 
what song or what revolutionary piece, you know, epitomizes or crystallizes the hundred years for you? Oh, there are so many songs, Shaga. But, you know, for me, those songs that were sung at the founding conference mm. and that have continued in churches all over South Africa. Do you, do you have, do you feel it's coming out? Do you have a bar for us to share with us? and the rest. And did you see how a young man, AKA, actually made the song current and mm. relevant by putting into it the, the, the latest beat and the way younger people feel music and culture. So we still sing it. We are going to sing it tonight. Yeah. There's a choir that's going to still put that song forward, which had been actually composed in the 1850s wow. by the leaders, the community leaders. That was long before the ANC was formed. But the people who were preoccupied with the improvement of the lot of their people, Dio Soka, composed that song. Okay. Ma, that's all we have time for. Thank you very much. Wow. What an incredible time we've had. Did you hear the harmony? Anyway, if you want to hear more, tune in next time. My ANC Talk. This is Shaga Sisulu. Thank you for joining us. <laughs>